Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse number 1. Are you there? Yeah. All right, you're there. Let me say I'm in the Word. I'm in the Word. Still looking. Say, wait on me. Amen. Amen. On uh, two Sundays ago, we looked at Matthew's account of Joseph's uh, perspective, his insight, his, uh, his side of the story, if you will, from being told Mary was going to conceive a child. Last Sunday, uh, we looked over at Luke as well, uh, looked at that occurrence when Mary received that announcement and proclamation from the angel. We told you nothing is impossible for God, is what that angel said. Dealt with uh, the God of impossible. So, uh, once again, Luke's account finds our our focus. Uh, now, at this point in time, uh, Jesus, Mary, has come full term, and uh, she's preparing uh, to give birth to Jesus. So, Luke chapter two, verse number one. New King James Version is translated into English from the original first century Greek text. You'll find these words recorded. And it came to pass, and that's enough. You may be seated. That's what I want to talk about. That's what I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk about it came to pass. To, and it came to pass in those days that the pre went out. Uh, that rest is this trip. I want to talk about it came to pass. Let us pray for our preaching. Father, breathe on your word so that we can hear you afresh and the new. We need you, but we thank you for the opportunity to celebrate you in this place. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you. Now, oh God, have your way. Is your mouthpiece for ministry in this moment. Place me, poise me, posture me, oh man. Pleases you. If I'm too high, bring me down. If I'm too low, lift me up. I don't have enough, give me more. If I have too much, take some from you. We just need for you to move mightily in this place. Give us a word that speaks uh, not only to where we've been, but where we are. Give us insight for where we're going. We love you and we thank you. Do it again in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It came to pass. It came. To pass. We solicit your prayers on today. You heard it said, but it's worth saying it again. Good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good becomes better and your better becomes best. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good becomes better and your better becomes best. With only just a couple more Sundays left in this year. We reflect back on how God has been with us throughout all of 2019. We started on the top of this year declaring as a people, as a congregation, as an assembly that we were going to make 2019 the best year of our life. And we were going to pull from the gospel of Little Duval and say we're going to live our best life. All right. We ain't going back and forth with some folks, but we're just going to live our best life. You know that the only way to get to best is for us to process through better. Yes. Therefore, we set out the top of the year by having a saying, a prayer, if you will, to guide our daily activity. Lord, help me to be better today than I was on yesterday. Yes. That daily we should strive and seek to become better as we seek to live a life led by God, live a life fulfilled by God. Good, better, best, never let it rest until your good becomes better and your better becomes best. We're seeking to live the best life we can live, and as a result, we're going through the stages of good, better, best. And my brothers and sisters, as we come now to the decrescendo, if you will, the end of 2019, we are reflecting and looking back on how God has not just guided our steps, but also guarded our steps, and in many instances, Govern our steps to be at the place we are in life right now. For some of us, as we look on the plate that is presented before us and the limited number of days we have 
in front of us in comparison to the number of days of this year that are behind us. The question mark arises within our cerebral cortex, our minds to wonder if God is still going to do what we feel we heard him say he could do. And my brothers and sisters, quite simply, if that is a question that is still lingering in your mind, still dangling in your spirit, I just come to remind you that of the many uh, attributes and many descriptions that we ascribe uh, and aspire to our divine God, he, you need to be reminded this morning that of one of the main descriptives that God holds that sometimes we don't hail as much is that the God we serve is a God who is is a finisher. God is a God that always finishes what he starts. Now, I thought I would get a couple of amens right there, so let me circle the block and plead my case to you this morning. Yeah. The God we serve is not a God who is an incomplete God. He's not a God that starts something, forgets about it, and then picks something else up and continues to re repeat that pattern only to have a lot of incompleted tasks dangling around him. He's not like me. He, he, he doesn't to start one thing, get caught up, get a phone call, get a message, uh, and, and get so off track that we then forget to get back to it. But the God that we serve is a God who finishes what he starts. He is a finisher. He's a God who finishes what he starts. You don't have to take my word for it. You can just look at the Holy Writ and see that everything that God has started, he always finished it from create from the creation narrative even to the here and now God is a God who finishes that in creation after he had completed all that he wanted after he had created all that he wanted to create and saw that which he had created was completed he then on the seventh day kicked his feet up put his hands back uh, put his hands in the back of his head relaxed for a while took a rest because he knew that what he had made was good and he rested. God is a God who finishes. My brothers and sisters, even as we look throughout life and look throughout what we have been through, we are reminded that God is not a God who is slack on the job, but he is a God that always finishes what he starts. Matter of fact, you've heard Grandmama say that he's the author and the finisher of our faith, which means he doesn't just start it, but he completes it because God is a finisher. He's Alpha and Omega, which is the beginning and the, and the first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. So to transliterate that into English, he's A to Z. God is a God who is a finisher. Philippians even tells us in chapter number one that he who began a good work in you shall complete it until the time or day of Jesus Christ. In other words, you don't have to get down, my brothers and sisters, but I come to remind you on this morning that God is not slack on the job. He's not sleep on the job. He had not even left the job. You don't even realize that he's really finished the job because the God we serve is a finisher. In case you're worried that he doesn't finish what he starts, Isaiah 46 and 10 tells us and informs us that he processes the end from the beginning, which means that if he started it, he's already had a divine plan to finish it, which means, my brothers and sisters, you don't ever have to worry about the plans of God being incomplete in our life because God is fully complete over all of our lives because the God we serve is a God who is a finisher. Yeah, when we step into the scene of the text here in Luke chapter 2, we now see God starting to finish something that he started. It didn't just start when he sent that angel Gabriel to Mary, but listen, even from the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 2, there had been a promise that through the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament scripture, over 400 prophecies had been given that was insight to let humanity know that divinity would finish the complete work of setting us into right relationship with him so that now when the time had fully come, Jesus was about to come through the womb of Mary in order to be received unto a world that he would die for in order to pull back into right relationship with God. 
chapter 2 says that it came to pass. Let the church say it came to pass. It came to pass that now the time had come for God to put another check mark or tick mark on his, on his to-do list of eternity to make sure what he started thousands of years ago was start to become Jesus 
is preparing to be born. Mary had already received the promise and the proclamation of Jesus' birth. Oh, that don't his back. And, and now, <laughs> God is preparing to deliver on the promise. And here it is. They are journeying and had to journey to Bethlehem. It was a part of the census. They had called them together. There, it was the task of everyone to now journey back uh, to those capital cities upon which families had been placed. Joseph, being a good Jewish man, he is, took his wife Mary. They had been there for a little while, had a place reserved for them in the in, 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 in the house upon which they were to stay. Uh, it's a whole other topic to deal with, more of a study session because we're so used to reading it from our our 20th century eyes. That we really don't realize when it talks about there was no room for them in the end. It was not really talking about a hotel. It was talking about the house upon which they were to stay with because hotels were not popular back then as they are now. So when everyone journeyed to town, they would do like you do when you really don't have enough money to go somewhere. When you're not taking a vacation, when you're just taking a trip and you stay with somebody you know. All right. And the church said amen. Because all your out-of-town vacations hadn't been a vacation. There's been some trips. You want to know the difference between a trip and a vacation is if you got a hotel. You got a reservation check in somewhere, and then that, that might be a vacation. But if you go and stand with your cousin in the house, and that extra room they got on the air mattress on the floor, that ain't making that's a trip, baby. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, it's all right. You can take your trips too. Man. They went there, and unfortunately, while they had been there for some time, now more people were coming to town, and Mary was preparing to give birth. And there was no room for her because part of the ceremonial process of a woman giving birth is that she needed to have her own independent space because the act of giving birth was considered a, a, a very messy, as still as it is in some instances, uh, an unclean act, which means that Mary would have to have adequate space for her to be able to deliver, to remain there for the eight days for cleansing. Uh, and then for seven days of cleansing, and then on the eighth day, be able to go to the temple for dedication, which was a part of the purification process. Which is why it wasn't until the eighth day that they took him to the temple that they named him Jesus as the tradition of the time of the text. But here it is, the son of man was being born in a situation, in a place that was not pretty, that was not pristine, that was not a palace, that for some were not even considered palatable, but really impoverished. Amen. He was born, as you already know, wrapped in swaddling clothes yes. and placed in a manger, a feeding trough, a place from which the animals would come and receive their nourishment. He was placed there. Now don't get too upset about that because that was, he was not the only one that was really in some instances considered semi-common uh, because the, of the, the sturdiness and the uh, stability of the actual trough was known to be able to care for the weight which was being placed in it by the child. But yet here it is, she had been promised that she was giving birth to God with us, Emmanuel. She was told she was giving birth to the Messiah for he would save his people from their sins. But where she was didn't look like the place upon which God said she should be. Because if God was going to come and give birth to his son, common people would think, anyone would think, just as the religious leaders of the time did, that he would not have him be born in such poor conditions. But he would pull out the best for himself because he was giving birth to his son. But sometimes, here it is, God has to pull us through situations that doesn't look like what he said we think it's going to look like for him to prove not just to us, but to everybody else that when we really get to where we want to be and need to be, 
God. Some folks put their hopes in man and chariots, but as the last verse for me and as of the word of God, the psalmist said, I put my trust in the Lord. And listen, there has to come a point in time when you, when the rubber meets the road, when you have to prove not just to God, but to yourself and to others that listen, it does not matter what life may seem, how you may feel, at the end of the day, I'm trusting God that I have a promise from God and if God has given me a promise I'm going to stand on that promise yes, it may seem like it's going to take some time, but the back of covers, it is walking a point in time, it may seem like it's going to tear it, but the Bible says it will not tear it, in other words it may seem late on our time but it's right on time with God's time, and at the right time, He will show up and when He shows up, He will show
conversation between Eve and the serpent, God and the serpent, that the Son of Man would bruise the head. And from that point on, the wheel, the clock started ticking. And it wasn't until the right time that God decided that now is the moment for it to happen. We don't know when that moment is. We don't know sometimes how he's going to make it come into, into fruition and manifestation. But if we trust him, that's, 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 that's what we're going to hang our hands on, on next Sunday. By putting that trust, look at that priest who had prayed that God would not take his life until he saw the manifestation of God's power. Sometimes you got to begin to declare to yourself that listen, I, I'm going to stay right here yes. until God does what He said He's going to do. Amen. Everybody else to do what you want. I'm going to right here because I truly plant my feet in the sand, my stake there to say that I'm trusting God. My prayers that you'll begin to trust them again. Can we give God a hand? Amen. As you stand to your feet, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. As we pray, I want you, I want you to know. Sometimes it might seem lonely and inconvenient and out of the norm to keep trusting on to something that others have given us their trust and their hope in. We dealt with it on weeks past, but it was an adjustment for Mary and Joseph to trust God and be a part of this way. The wedding had to be called off. Had to now go to a secret ceremony. Even some theologians believe that the reason that Luke highlights there was no room for them was really in response to her family, to the family of them whose house they were hypothesized and supposed to be staying in. Because it was known that they were not married, but it was also known that she was pregnant. And it wouldn't be just a disgrace to her, but it's a disgrace to the family. Yes. My, my, my. Yes. Yes. So we cannot allow her to be in the house when the baby comes. So there's no room in the end, really, the guest chamber. Cataluma yes. is what the word is called. And so being put out to where she had hit seemingly, situationally, circumstantially, rock bottom. <laughs> but the good thing about being at rock bottom, if you know Jesus, is that you know he's the rock at the bottom. Hey! Amen. Yeah. And when you know he's the rock at the bottom, yeah. you know you're standing on a firm foundation. Yeah. Amen. So from there, the story begins. Trusting God every step of the way. Through the birth, through the Egyptian, Exodus, exile, hiding, coming back, trusting God. I want to encourage you. Sometimes people may not understand. All family and friends may seem to distance themselves. But keep trusting. May seem lonely. Keep trusting. And I can tell everybody everything. Some stuff you got to keep. You got to keep tight. Keep quiet, God. Right? You and I, we're going to work this day out. Just watch God. Yeah. Give him some time. Yeah. Give him, give him. Now, not only to change the situation.
situation, but sometimes change us to see the new situation. That's right. That things will come to pass. 